raise your hand if you have been to the doctor recently. Okay, I see a few hands. I see a smile. Good for you. But now imagine you are the doctor's office and you are in the waiting area. But in this situation, you are sick and nervous. You are in pain. You know there's something wrong, but you don't know what it is. The doctor calls you in, performs a check, and then he talks to you and says, Buenas tardes. Hemos hecho un electrocardiograma y hemos determinado que usted tiene una arritmia. Entonces queremos hacerle otros exámenes para descartar que tenga alguna complicación. Sabemos que tiene dolor. Vamos a darle una medicación. Juntos vamos a solucionar su problema de salud. You have no idea what the doctor just said. You don't speak Spanish. You are worried, confused, and you don't know what to do next. This is the way many doctors and patients feel every day. 25 million people in the United States can communicate in English with the healthcare providers. But how do we handle situations when we need to know what is being said, especially in situations of life or death? Let me tell you a story. When my son was two, I had to go to work, so I left him in daycare. So I left him there and I went to work. When I got there, I noticed I had three missed calls from the daycare. So I called them. They answered right, that, right back. Miss Diana? Yes, this is Diana. Miss Diana? Yes, this is her. Your son had an accident. An accident, I said. I drove back fast back to the daycare. I ran two red lights. At first, I was afraid. I was petrified. I thought he had a serious injury, possibly being dead. So I ran into the daycare, pushed the door open, and I saw him on the playground, happy and healthy. So I asked the teachers, what kind of accident was he part of? And they respond with a smile. Oh, he was just playing on the swing, took his diaper off, and went number two on the swings. <laughs> Did they use the word accident for a bathroom situation? I almost had an accident myself going back to the daycare. But okay, I was happy because my son was okay at that moment. So we don't miscommunicate for the lack of words, but the true cause of miscommunication is the lack of understanding of words in a context. Let me tell you another story. I recently was a volunteer in the community health fair. I was the interpreter for the people who only speak Spanish. And I was hoping a family, many families, the organizers divided the fair in four stations. There was a station for immunization information, HIV prevention, and they had a card that you had to stamp going from place to place. Because of that, they call it a passport. You know what I'm getting. They call it a passport. And I started calling it a pasaporte. And when they complete it, people can get a free meal. And again, I was helping this one family with a wife and a husband, and I approached the husband who seemed to be fearful about the whole thing. Actually, the whole family, body language, was in complete shock and shaking. So I approached him and I asked, what's wrong? ¿Qué pasa? And he said, ¿Por qué no van a estampar el pasaporte? Why are they going to stamp our passports? And I said, well, these are the rules, and I'm just following them. He finally reaches into the backpack and shaking, hits me. He gives me the real passports. No, 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 you don't have to give me your country passport to get a free meal. No, that's not what you, actually, what do you call this piece of paper? He says, I'm from Nicaragua, and I call this a boleta. And I said, oh, I'm from Argentina, I call that a tarjeta. We have a little discussion, clarification. And then they were so happy and relaxed. Without that clarification, they would have missed some very important resources. So then I advised the organizers, perhaps you can use a different word for that car. And I started using a different word myself. This is a good example of cultural humility. Cultural humility is when you know a lot about a culture, or even a language, like in this case, I'm a native speaker of Spanish, but you stop and ask the person in front of you, is this the case for you too? So remember, when you want to communicate effectively, word choice matters. <laughs> the stories I share with you today 
aren't serious. But often in health care, they can be. One war misinterpreted can lead to death and serious injuries. For example, the word once. Once in English means one time, but in Spanish means 11, once. Can you imagine a person looking at a pill bottle and taking that medication 11 times? Es un tema serio. It's a serious matter. While the stories I share with you today could be funny, they're truly not. Humor is not lost in translation, but a life can be. Take the case of Willie Ramirez in Florida. He had to go to the hospital. He was unconscious. Somebody else spoke for him. They used the word intoxicado to use for his description for what he was suffering. And if you translate intoxicado into English, you get the word intoxicated. Intoxicated in English means that you did drug overuse or alcohol. But in Spanish, it means also that you could have a food indigestion or ate something bad or just you have food poisoning. Unfortunately, the word was interpreted literally and Willie was treated for the wrong reasons. And the delay in treatment for the right reasons caused him to have permanent health issues. The hospital was sued for malpractice, and they reached a settlement of $71 million to care for the life love situation that Willie endured due to this misinterpreting. Having cultural competent interpreters is very important. Interpreters not only know the meaning of a word, but how that word works in a context. Interpreters are as important as doctors when it comes to doing no harm. They can prevent complications, and this can save a life. I urge all medical personnel, all medical staff, and anybody involved in healthcare to learn more about the risk of not having cultural competent interpreters on staff. One word with two meanings. You can only imagine how hard that can be for a person learning a second language. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services developed the national standards for culturally and linguistically appropriate services to be enforced in every state. Not here in Tennessee, we don't do it. Despite the fact that there is a growing population of non-English speakers, everyone deserves to communicate effectively with a healthcare provider. Not having cultural competent interpreters could mean that a person also does not look for care because there is care that might not be understood. Language access is an important health indicator. Doctors take an oath to do no harm, yet ignoring these language barriers as we've seen today could have devastating consequences. More clinics and doctors need to have culture competent interpreters and staff to make sure this doesn't happen. We usually call people looking for care patients, but we need to be patient ourselves and stop and ask for clarification together. Be an advocate for language and culture understanding, and you could be saving a life, whether you're a doctor or not. Thank you.